Hi, welcome to this new Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, we're actually going to focus on something a little different today. Normally, I intend to do sort of programming tutorials, and instead I'm going to focus on a shader, just because I've been having a bit of fun messing around with one. And I just kind of want to branch out a little bit in what we do in this channel anyway, even though it has been a long time. So you'll notice straight away what the shader intends to be. It's a fog shader. So as we can see, the further we go away, the more of these buildings sort of get encompassed in this fog. But it's not on a straight line, so wherever I turn the camera, it doesn't matter. The radius is still the same. Obviously, there's a few settings we can change in this. If I just create an instance to show you. Uh, I have a few things set, so we've got the distance that the fog begins to get stronger, so we can set this to like 5,000, as you can see already, you're noticing quite a bit of a difference. You can change the fog colour, so we could have some blue fog. If you wanted to make a bit of an underwater thing, obviously you need a bit more post-processing. We've got start distance, so that's how quick it sort of around the camera it begins to start so as you can see we've got this bit here if we put this up to like 2500 you'll see that it begins to decrease the radius when the fog begins and the use 2d vector is something that's enabled by default and it just changes the distance and radius so as you can see when i go up the area around the sphere is still visible, it's not in fog. But if I turn this off, so we'll now be using 3D vectors, the sphere is no longer visible until we're closer. And we also have scene depth, which uses scene depth post-processing rather than the distance. So, that's the post-processing in and of itself. Let's get down into how we create this. So first off, we're going to want to right click and we're going to want to create a new material. And I'm going to just name this Fog Tut for Fog Tutorial. And I'm going to just place it on here. So first thing, we're just going to create the basic fog effect. So we're going to want to create a vector parameter. So if you hold the V and left click, we'll create a vector parameter here, which I'm going to name Fog Color. And the clues in the name, it's going to be the colour of the fog, so I'm just going to set it to white. There we go. So in the details panel, something we need to do as well is change it from surface to post process in material domain. Click apply, and I'm just going to drag this into emissive colour. Now, what this instantly is doing now is if we put this in our post processing, if I change it to fog tut, everything's white. Because that's what we're telling the post-processing to do. Just make everything white. Instead, we now need to begin to interpret our scene into this. So first off, we're going to want a scene texture parameter. So if you right click and type scene texture, it'll bring up this node. And we don't want scene color. We want post-process input zero. So this is generally the first process that is passed to us. So in the UV, we can just get the texture coordinate. So that'll be the current point we're rendering in that scene texture. So for each pixel, we'll kind of pick out it out from the rendered scene. Next, we want to take a mask and we want a component mask and we want the RGB values. So if you drag off from color, type mask, component mask, and in the left hand side, click RGB to make sure they're all here. Then that's everything we need from our scene texture. Now we just need to interpret that with our fog. So if we go to Drag off from mask, we can go lerp. We want a linear interpolate. Drag the top one off for B and paste this into emissive color. 
Now you see here, it's already updated to show that now what our post process does is simply it makes everything a heck of a lot brighter and more white. So now we're beginning to get the fog effect, but we need to actually make it seem more, you know, fog-like. So the next step is to get a distance from the camera to the world pixel point that we're currently trying to render. And we want to use that as our alpha here so we can get a difference in strength of the fog. So you want to right click and type world position. And we're going to get this absolute world position node. And then you're going to want camera position. And it's the camera position WS there. And that's the one we're taking here. Next, we need to do some quick vector maths, but it's really simple. We're going to subtract our camera position from the absolute world position and get a vector length of that vector. Okay, now we're going to want to see just how far this is. So I'm going to break this link and we're going to use our vector three here. We're going to want to see how far this vector is in terms of how much fog density we want. So we want to add a new parameter, a static one. So hold S and left click. We'll bring in a static parameter, which we will call, you can call it a fog distance or fog density distance, that sort of a thing. And we're going to set it to a default value of uh, 2500 or whatever you want to set it to. Next, we divide the vector length by our fog density distance. And this is gonna give us a value, but we kind of need it between zero and one for the lip. So we're going to drag off from divide, use clamp, and we're going to keep these values here as usual, zero and one. And what this will do is Anything below zero will be clamped to be zero at the minimum. Anything above one is clamped to be one at the minimum. Now anything in between is left as it is. So now we're getting values ranging from zero to one. And we can just pop this in our alpha. Click apply. You can already see it's updated in this view, but if we put it in here, oh, make sure you always save the level before hitting play in the post process. But now we can see we're beginning to get that fog effect that we're wanting. So as we get further away, the fog gets stronger. As we get closer, it gets weaker. Now, currently how we have it is everything still being affected even slightly. So buildings you're right next to are still going to be a bit more white than they should be. But you can see we don't have this straight wall that you might usually get in some games. So if I took scene depth, popped this in here, you can see that as I turn the camera here, this line, if you focus on the line here between these buildings, begins to move because of that camera rotation. But when we're using our vector length here, we go to about the same position, you'll see that nothing is changing as I rotate the camera. Obviously there will be slight changes because as you rotate the camera, it may move in the world space a bit, but it's barely noticeable. So that gives us a nice radius effect where we don't have to worry about the camera. Now, the last thing we're gonna do for this tutorial is we're going to add that start distance so that everything around the player is still relatively 
unfogged and gets that original art style you were going for. So to do this we're going to need another linear interpolation. So we search for lert, math, linear interpolate. We're going to take this value as our b and our a is going to be this mask once again. And the alpha is similar to what we've got over here. So we can take a new parameter, call it start distance, set it to a value of about 100 or whatever you want, maybe 500, give it a bit more distance. We'll take the vector length again, divide it by our start distance, and once again, we're going to want to take our clamp. So let's come off here. We're going to clamp the value again between 0 and 1. Pop this into our alpha. Pop that into a missive color. And depending on your values, it might not be as easy to notice. But you should be able to notice a difference, even if it's ever so slightly, between this and this. So if we click play, you can just notice that everything around is not as bright as it originally was. So that is how we create an atmospheric fog effect. In part two of this video, I'm going to look at actually adding those values for your instances that I made so you can have the different vector effects because we're going to be using something called switches. So we will get into that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you find this material useful. Fog is a very useful thing in all games, especially sort of open world games where you want to begin to hide the atmosphere, or maybe you're making a Silent Hill style game, that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it's helpful, and I will see you next time. Thank you, bye. Okay, just a quick thing I forgot to mention. Um, so to actually add your post-processing material to your post-process volume, First, make sure you have one in the scene, otherwise go to Volumes, and near to the bottom you'll see Post Process Volume. Just drag that into the scene. Next off, you're going to want to go to Post Process Volume Settings, tick Infinite Extent, Unbound, and then we're going to want to go to Rendering Features, Post Process Material, Array, we're going to click Add, it's going to ask us to choose, but we don't have any in the scene. So we're going to want to click Asset Reference. Now you can use this or just drag and drop. So we'll just drag our fog tutorial into here. And now you can see that it is now working as the post-process volume.